How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today I want to talk about this little guy here. This is a refractometer. I want to talk to you about why I love these things so much. Uh, the advantages of them, the disadvantages of them, how you use them, and the giant traps that you can fall into if you don't know what you're looking out for with these things. <laughs> Welcome Distiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation. So if that's what you're into guys, if you want to make craft spirits, this is the channel for you. On the other hand, if you just love craft spirits and you want to appreciate more about what goes into your favourite drinks, this is great for you as well. So hit the subscribe button down below guys and don't miss anything. Real quick announcement before we get into the main video, Chase the Craft hats are now available on my Teespring site. I know you guys have been asking for these for ages, some people just like them better than t-shirts and so on and so forth, that's totally cool. Uh, they're up, they're live, I'll leave a link down below. I haven't got one yet, I haven't even ordered my samples when I'm recording this. By the time you guys see this I would have ordered samples, but they won't be here yet. Um, so there you have it, they're there you guys if you want them. So, refractometers. Now these things <laughs> are a bit of an enigma guys, there's a, a right way to use them, there's definitely a wrong way to use them. And in between the two, there's all sorts of stages of near enough's good enough and kind of how much effort do you really want to expend for the exact precision of the readings you're wanting and whether those precision readings really matter. Really quickly, what this thing does is it tells you how much sugar is in solution. So for as, as brewers and distillers, that's important for us because we want to know what's in our solution in our work, right? Uh, either how much physical sugar we've added in if we're doing a sugar wash for distillers or how much sugar we're extracting from the grains um, during a mash or from fruits or whatever it happens to be. We want to know how much sugar is in the liquid so we can you know, gauge how much food we're giving the yeast essentially. Uh, so what I'm going to do guys is run through really quickly the proper way to use this thing. I uh, will almost guarantee that some of you are going to say screw that, it looks like far too much energy and uh, time. I will stick to using a hydrometer. Yes, I can understand where you're coming from. Let me show you the proper way to do it first and then right after that I'm going to show you the way that I actually do it when I'm using it for distilling. Uh, and then after that we can talk about some more of the geeky stuff. Cool? So first up, give it a little bit of a rinse with distilled water, uh, just to make sure there's nothing on there from the last time you used it. Give it a wipe down, ideally with a nice soft cloth, not a crappy paper towel. Add a little bit more distilled water onto the prism and press the cover down firmly, but not too hard, so most of the bubbles disappear. Then you can pick it up, have a look through it. Take note of where the blue line is and where it's intersecting with the scale on the left, the brick scale. That's the way we read these things. Because we have distilled water on the thing at the moment, it should be reading zero, so we can use a very small screwdriver to adjust the small screw on the top until the blue line lines up with the zero on the left-hand side. After another quick wipe, we can add a small sample of the solution we want to check, then have another look through the refractometer. In this case, it's reading pretty much exactly 21 bricks on the left-hand side. You can see that, I hope. Then use a calculator, something like Bearsmith will work. Make sure it has a work correction factor built into it that you can adjust. In this case, 21 bricks is the same as 1084. Okay, so I'm guessing some of you are saying that does not seem any easier than just floating a hydrometer in something and taking a reading, right? And I can kind of take your point there, to be honest. But, like I said, uh, I was doing things overly proper and the reason you do things overly proper with a hydrometer is that uh, you're going to get a better result. So assuming that you do all of those things that I just talked about perfectly, uh, you can expect a much more accurate reading. I mean an accurate reading versus a non-accurate reading is going to be about two gravity points. Now if you are trying to really dive, dial in a homebrew beer recipe, two gravity points could be a big deal. Especially at the at the uh, the finishing end, when you're wanting to dial in mouthfeel and you know how how much body the beer has. If, however, we're aiming for like 1083, like we were in that sample for distilling, and uh, we read 1083, but it's actually 1081 or 1.083, and we actually get 1.081, that is the difference of a third of a percent of alcohol fermented out. So it's really not a big deal. <laughs> 
so let me show you really quickly what I actually do when I'm, especially when I'm distilling. Uh, and then after that, we can go back into some of the geekery, more geekery stuff. We'll talk about that work correction factor, where that comes into play, how it changes between um, straight sugar water, like if you're doing a sugar mash and an all grain, those sort of things. Uh, and then we can also talk about those pitfalls, those traps that I told you that you can fall into. I want to make sure you don't fall into those. So let's show you really quickly how I actually use this thing. Duncan water, wipe on shirt. Duncan water again, check calibration. Wipe on shirt again, add a little bit of wort, and take the reading directly from the gravity scale on the right. So essentially that's the reason I love this thing. It allows me to take lots and lots and lots of readings without having to go through all of that effort. That gives me more information, that makes me want to take readings. I just enjoy using this thing. I don't enjoy using the uh, hydrometers a lot. It's just the way I am. You may be different, that's cool. All right guys, so let's talk really quickly about that work correction factor that I talked about in the very first example I gave you. These things are designed to work on refraction and that works really well uh, in a relatively linear manner for how much simple sugar is in water. What they're not so good at doing is reading the random mix of lots of different types of more complex sugars and all sorts of crazy stuff that is, uh, that is in a wash. And essentially what that does is it throws things off. So what you need to do is use a work correction factor to bring those equations back in line and adjust for the, the weird stuff going on in a wash compared to just sugar and water. The problem is that that is different based on your refractometer and based on the types of washes that you're making. So the only proper, proper way to get a really accurate reading is to get a bunch of samples, compare your reading from a hydrometer to your refractometer with a certain wort type, uh, make a bunch of different worts that are similar but not exactly the same, take more readings, so on and so forth. And like I said earlier on guys, if you want that precision, if you want to be within one gravity point, you know, a half a gravity point of knowing exactly what's going on with your wash, that's what you need to do. Now if that's what you want to do, all power to you. I completely respect that. And when I'm doing something specific, when I, you know, if I was to uh, be brewing a beer over and over again and trying to nail the same recipe, make it better, improve on it, I'd probably want to do that to be perfectly honest with you but it is a lot of effort. If you want to do that, don't listen to me because right now I'm in lazy distiller mode. Uh, I will put a link down below uh, to a page that actually gives you a spreadsheet that'll help you work out your work correction number for your refractometer. Cool? Now, like I said, guys, this is, this is the difference of two gravity points, 0.3 of a percent of alcohol. So uh, for the example we're using here, if it was 1083 versus uh, 1081 for example, I think that's like 8% uh, gravity, 8% alcohol for ferments down to 1010 or 8.3% alcohol. It's, it's very, very minimal. Cool. So for this refractometer, I know that my gravity points uh, on the right hand side are with a work correction factor of 1. As in there is no work correction factor on this thing. So this thing is pretty good for uh, reading sugar, simple sugar in water. I can just trust the gravity points on the right. I know, however, if I'm doing something like this, it's going to be, you know, two, maybe three gravity points out, depending on where it is on the scale. All right, so where you are going to get yourself in really big trouble with this thing is if you start trying to use it uh, at the end of fermentation. So you know the uh, calculators that you can get, you put your gravity in at the beginning of fermentation, the gravity in at the end of fermentation, it gives you your percent. If you try to use this for that, you're going to get some weird ass numbers and you're not going to figure out what's going on. And the reason is that when you throw alcohol into the mix in here, it completely screws the refraction up and you're not going to get any, any sensible answer whatsoever. There are calculators that'll help you out, but you must have, you must have a reading from the same refractometer at the beginning of fermentation to even attempt it. So if you don't have that, forget about it. You're not going to be able to do it. Once again, those calculations are not... They're not correct in every situation. It's, it's such a specific thing that there's just no way to write a formula that is correct under all situations with all instruments, all words, uh, all starting gravities, finishing gravities, so on and so forth. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, there is one that I've come to trust almost above anything else. Well, actually there's two. 
One's Bearsmith, I think is really good, but that's quite an expensive piece of software. The second is Sean's Calculator, and I will put a link for that down below in the description. I've, just out of personal use, when I was doing beer and I liked using this thing, I did try a bunch of different calculators and tested it against my hydrometer. That is by far the best I found. Now, once again, it is not gonna give you a perfectly accurate reading. A precision hydrometer will give you a better reading than doing the formulation with this on Sean's calculator. But, at the same time, you can take a literally an eyedropper sample <laughs> out of your fermenter as you're walking past it. You don't have to mess around temperature controlling it. You can bang it on this thing, plug it into the calculator, have an answer in 25 seconds, and know if you're in the ballpark. Yeah, so, I don't know, it's, it's up to you guys, <laughs> it's up to you guys. Alright guys, so I am almost entirely positive that I have forgotten something to say about refractometers. To be honest, I kind of shot this video off the cuff, there wasn't really any planning that went into this one. So apologies for that guys, but check the comments section down below because if you know that I've forgotten something that I should have said, uh, put it there, let people know. If you're not sure about something, check the comment section. Someone's probably answered it or talked about it already. If they haven't, ask the question and someone will come along and help you out. Just be aware, team, that like I've tried to state over and over and over again in this video, some people use this thing... Some people use these things, or these things, to be super, super, super duper accurate, which is awesome, I commend you. Some people use these things as a general guideline because it's better, because it's better than doing this. It's kind of sweet. And some people like me sort of fall right down the middle of those two things. So just have a little bit of uh, compassion for what other people are trying to accomplish, not what you think they should do. Does that make sense? So as long as you're helping people get to the point that they actually want to get to, you're doing an awesome thing. If you're trying to push your opinion on what's important in a craft on someone else, not so much. Not that we've got a problem with that in the comment section here. Um, we really and truly honestly don't guys and I thank you so much for that. I don't know how, I don't know how we've got a comment section in YouTube that isn't a complete show. <laughs> I don't know how, but it's a, but yeah, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Also, I totally appreciate the Patreons, guys. Uh, videos like this do not happen without these people here. Uh, so a huge thank you to these people. Uh, if you don't know what Patreon is, you can check the link out down below in the video section below. If it looks like something you'd be interested, you can sign up. Uh, that would help me out a whole lot. It helps the channel out, and I would very much appreciate it. All right, guys, lots of other exciting stuff coming up, so I'll catch you next time. Uh, keep on chasing the craft. See you later, guys.